this is the review for the quiz at the end of the week. Okay, welcome everybody. Technical issues. We're hanging in there. We're living. It is Kahoot because we're going to have a quiz at the end of the week. So we're going to do review. We're going to do review and I'll see what we need more practice on. So go ahead. If you want to join using a separate Chrome tab, using a phone, if you have a separate device, you can play along in the chat. You can have a scratch piece of paper. If you may want a calculator, I don't know. There's not too many crazy calculations. I probably don't want your notes though. So take a second, grab your notes, get logged into Kahoot. And we'll go over some very similar questions to what will be on the quiz. And that will be on Thursday when I see you. Alrighty, if you haven't already, go mark yourself as present, please, and thank you. Maybe we need another minute to join. I'm going to get started. If you haven't gotten in already yet, the code will be at the bottom. I will also type it into the chat for you so you can join later. 747 1455. There you go. Thank you, Noah. Good to see you. Alrighty. This is review of polynomials. First question, which polynomial is not in standard form? Which one is not in standard form? Yeah, you remember standard form starts with the highest degree term and then it continues to descend. So here we see x to the fourth power plus x to the fifth power. Nope, this thing is not in standard form because that x to the fifth power, the highest degree term, should be at the front. Perfect, standard form. All right, what is an example of an eighth degree polynomial with two terms that is in standard form? Kind of small, hopefully you can see that. That's okay, F Max. You can play along in the chat if you like. So eighth degree, highest exponent should be eight. If it has two terms, then it's only gonna have two things that are like being added or subtracted, right? Okay, yeah, careful. This one, it was in standard form technically, but you had one, two, three, four different terms there, right? Okay. If you have questions, let me know. Which polynomial has the highest degree? Yep, just look at those exponents, all right? Again, welcome if you just joined us. You can play along in the chat. You can join using the game pin at the bottom there. All right, highest degree, just look at your exponents. This is a sixth degree polynomial. Once we get over degrees of four or five, right? We just call them sixth degree or seventh degree polynomial. We did have some special names if they were maybe a fifth degree polynomial. Maybe to look at your notes. What's the parent function of a fifth degree polynomial? Ooh, you guys are quick. <laughs> so quadratic was two, right? Linear was just a line. It just had like three X plus one. That's a first degree polynomial, right? 
Quintic was degree five quintic, and then cubic, degree three cubic. Parent function of that guy. Yep, degree three, so it is a cubic function. Its parent function is x to the third power, right? Just the regular standard parent function there. All right. What transformation is happening here? If you have f of x and you take the cubic function, you multiply it by two, what kind of transformation is that? Maybe you went a little bit quick there. Let's talk about those transformations. You should have this written down in your notes somewhere possibly. It's also available in Google Classroom and it's something that I will give to you on the quiz, right? But we see that we were taking our function, our, the parent function, the cubic x to the third power, we're just multiplying it by two, right? So according to this, you can look through all of these rules, see which one is the closest, if I take a parameter, a, and multiply it by my function, f of x, where a is greater than 1, 2 is greater than 1, then this is technically a stretch vertically, all right? So we could say that that is a vertical stretch on a cubic function. Put that up there in case you need to check it out one more time. I think I've got one more of these to talk about. Let that soak in. All right, what transformation is happening there? I'll tell you it's a horizontal shift. You gotta decide if it's left or right. Yeah, horizontal shift right. Remember when we had parameters on the inside of our function? And earlier we had deal with linear functions or quadratic functions, right? Well, we can still do this with higher degree polynomials. You got that negative four on the inside of your function. Subtract four from x before you take it to the fifth power. That's a horizontal shift. And then you look at the sign of those things and you kind of think opposite. So since it's a negative four, I'm gonna go in like the positive direction on x, right? And that is shifting something to the right. Okay. Is f of x equals x to the fourth power odd or even? Just a general quartic function. Yep, it is even. You could think about its graph. It looks kind of like a quadratic, not really. Um, you know, it's kind of got the same little U shape, right? And that is symmetrical about the Y axis. So if it's even, it's gonna be symmetrical about the Y axis. We also saw that you could just look at the exponent, since four is an even number, we know that the parent function has to be an even function. Odd was rotational about the origin, right? It had this idea of rotational symmetry of like 180 degrees. You could rotate that thing around. Things like the cubic function, x to the third power, or x to the fifth power, those would be odd functions. Or x to the 11th power, right? All right, take a look at this graph now. Tell me, is there a global maximum? They're a global maximum. Yep, 
yes, at positive infinity. Remember we had global and local maximums or global and local minimums. And these are usually going to occur at turning points in our function. We have a turning point here. That's technically a maximum, right? It would just be a local maximum because we do have a global minimum, even though it's not really a turning point up there at positive infinity, it's still technically called a maximum. So just make sure you know the difference between global and local. Local, like your area, your local area, usually the interesting part, right? This is the interesting part of our graph. All righty. We already talked about this, but is there a local maximum? it'll be at that other turning point, which is about at negative three, 2.5. I wasn't able to label these. On the, on the quiz, I'll actually say, you know, this is point A and this is point B, which one is a global maximum, right? Or local maximum. How many turning points are there? Again, you can participate in the chat if you're not in the Kahoot. Yep, just two, all right. Turning points are where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing. So you're increasing, you're increasing, you hit that turning point, now you're decreasing for a while, hit another turning point, now you're increasing. All right, so definitely just two there. And if we assume that the function just keeps going on and on forever to positive infinity, negative infinity, there's probably not going to be any turning points off towards the ends, right? All right. What are the x-intercepts? x-intercepts, don't forget, those are where your graph crosses the x-axis, right? I'll pull up that picture one more time. Boom, crosses right there at negative four, crosses again at negative one, once more at two. So we have three x-intercepts and we just named them by looking at where they cross. All right. If you had to possibly write this in intercept form, now that you know what the x-intercepts are, what would that be? Think about the opposite. Sorry, these questions are gonna kind of going quick. I didn't set them to long enough seconds. Alrighty. So we decided our x-intercepts are at negative four. So that means the corresponding linear factor, instead of negative four, it's gonna be a positive four, right? So, and we can see back here, one of those intercepts or one of those linear factors there, the chunks of our polynomial is x plus four. Another x-intercept is at negative one, so we should have a little chunk of our polynomial be x plus one. We have an x-intercept at positive two, so another linear factor would be x minus two, right? So look at those x-intercepts and think the opposite. All right, so definitely that one there. All right, what are the x-intercepts from this graph? Well, it's kind of hard to see, sorry. Clearly there's one there. There's one here. And there's another one right here. 
Yep, I'll pull that up again so we can see that. Negative three, negative one, and four. My next question, I'm gonna ask you about tangent or crossing. So take a look at those. Look at those x-intercepts. All right, let's talk about some tangent and crossing x-intercepts. How many of them are tangent? All right, remember the difference between tangent and crossing? Crossing just literally means, does the function go from below the x-axis to above the x-axis? Does your function actually cross the x-axis here? Or is it tangent? It's tangent here at negative three because it touches the x-axis, but it doesn't cross, right? So we definitely have one tangent intercept here. So if there's one tangent, I mean, the other ones have to be crossing, right? Yep, yep, three total, perfect. The other two are crossing intercepts. Okay, what are the x-intercepts from this function here? Again, look at those and try and think the opposite, right? Look at those chunks. So the opposite of a positive 10 is a negative 10. That's one of your intercepts. Good, yeah. I threw this one out there because I definitely want to talk about that one right there. You could say, so I'm gonna focus kind of going right to left, x plus 10, think about the opposite. So that means instead of a positive 10, you have a negative 10, right? So negative 10 would be one of your intercepts. x minus five, look at that variable factor. All right, well, opposite of negative five would be a positive five. The other one here is just x or 7x. What would make that zero? Just zero, right? Again, we're looking for the values that make, e that make each one of these zero. So if this one is just x, <laughs> if you set that equal to zero and try and solve, you're just gonna get x equals zero. So we're, we're going to include zero right there in our intercept list. Okay. What is the degree of this? If you had to think about even multiplying all of this out or foiling it all out, how many x's would you be multiplying eventually? <laughs> Sorry, these questions are pretty short. But yeah, we would have three x's. Eventually we'd have to multiply those all out. Eventually we would have x to the third power, right? So the degree of that thing would be three. So really just look at how many variable factors you have. I got one here, I got one here, and I got one there. All right. What is the parent function of that? We said it's a degree three polynomial. Yep, it is a cubic. Very good. All right, so whether or not it's an intercept form or standard form, you can see where the degree is gonna be. You can tell me what the parent function is going to be. Okay, this one might be a little tricky one. That 
function can have at most how many turning points? We had a little thing in our notes that if you have degree n, you can have n minus 1 turning points. Yeah, so if this is a degree 3 polynomial, well, 3 minus 1, it can have at most two turning points, right? If you had a quadratic, it can only have one turning point at the most, right? Because quadratic has degree 2, 2 minus 1 is just 1. If you had a degree 5001 polynomial, right? <laughs> you would only be able to have at most 5,000 turning points. What's the degree of this? It's an intercept form. Yep, degree is two, perfect. You see two linear factors. You could try to foil this all out. Eventually you're gonna get x squared, right? Technically, it would be x squared plus 5x minus 2x uh, and then minus 10, right? Your highest power there is 2. So if its power is 2, how many turning points at most can it have? Yep, it can only have at most 1. There you go. Yep, look at that degree. You can have at most n minus 1. So 100 minus 1 is 99 turning points. Okay. That was a good review for Monday. Last question, just let me know. We'll have a review on Wednesday. So what do we need more practice on? Do we need more practice on intercept form? And looking at those x-intercepts, maybe more practice on degree and parent functions, identifying the degree, this is a quintic, or this is a quadratic. Maybe you need to look at some local minimums, maximums, or are you good? Analyze graphs and intercept form. Okay, awesome. So on Wednesday, I'll have some questions to prepare for that. Alrighty. Uh, that is all I have for you today. If you have questions or want to work on homework, please stay behind in the meet. Again, I'm here to help you, so let me know what I can help you with, all right? Uh, I know some of you have been starting to arrive late. I'm just going to go ahead and start getting started, like at maybe one or two minutes right after class, all right? So make sure you're looking at what time class starts, okay? I'm going to try and have a recording. Okay, <laughs> thanks for letting me know, Jace. All right, have a good day, guys. Let me know if you have questions. I'll be here. All right. I didn't take my bear. That's totally fine. All good.